We live in a fast-paced world in which advertisers race to keep up not only with consumer behavior and trends, but with an increasing number of digital outlets as well. Scaling an ad campaign for an ever-growing list of platforms is tedious, repetitive, and time-consuming work. This is where Creatopy comes into play. Creatopy is an ad design platform that helps businesses customize, automate, and scale their ad production and deliver. And then that was like, and then Gosh. I was like, oh, see, this is me. See, my brain my... is like a sieve. <laughs> Deb, I can't even remember what year that was. I actually think you're like a year ahead. Like your timelines are off by.
Did, did you play with fire when you, was a, when you were a little boy? I think you always. When you are little, uh. fire is one of the most fascinating uh. things what you can get. I think the other is water. Uh. So I was uh, raised in the, in the countryside and uh, we had a, you don't even say river, no? So very, very small, what is the... Uh, the a brook or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, very small. So yeah. this, this deepness and maybe like this. Yeah. And I tell you, this is so fascinating for, it was for me, for my kids, for all the kids, whatever generation, whatever time, water and fire is fascinating for, yeah. I think, ever. Yeah. No, no, I, I, I totally agree with you. I, I also, I grew up uh, in the countryside and uh, my parents would give me a lot of freedom. So I would always be or making fires. When I got home from school, my, my mother would give me or rubber boots and an overall or wooden shoes, uh, depending on the weather. And then uh, I would also live near, near a place where there were no, yeah, some, some, some water pools, etc. So I would catch frogs and uh, all that sort of stuff. F definitely fall into the water, but I sometimes feel sorry for, for, for my kids that they didn't have the, the, the freedom or just make a fire whenever you want or just fall into water or fall out of trees. And, and that's, 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 uh, that is fantastic. I, lo I, love, I love fire. I mean, so it's, uh, it's much better than watching television. One of the other things for that, that for me, when I think about my childhood, uh, is, is uh, riding a bike, you know. Uh, the incredible freedom that you have when you ride a bike, when you're a kid, in, and of course in the Netherlands, you could go everywhere on your little bike, and you know people would watch you, would be careful in traffic. Incredible freedom, and I, so my, okay, I lived in, in Russia and in, in Hungary and Romania. You know, my kids couldn't ride bikes uh, except in a very protected uh, environment. Bit of a pity, but but <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, when I was. Till 16. I mean, when you, when you are then, then at the age of 16, uh, you probably you don't ride when you go to school. I was always riding my bike to school, even in winter when yeah, there was yeah, snow yeah. like this. Yeah, yeah. Always. Yeah. Of course, when you get 16 or older, then you rather try to walk with a girl than uh, <laughs> than riding a bike. But till then, yeah, these things are changing. I would say now in the cities you can can ride the bike again, and, and not bad, I would say. Yeah. Maybe not as a kid, but uh, as a grown-up. But you, you live in the countryside even now, is it? So yeah, yeah. No, I, so you know, I only for a very short period of time of about 10 years, I, I not fully, but I lived in the city. But uh, when, I, when my kids were born, then there was the clear decision that they should be raised in the countryside. And I mean, I'm, I'm close to the city, so I'm a commuter, so it's uh, 60 kilometers or so, so it's not, not a big thing. And uh, uh, yeah, with all the green, green thoughts what we have, um, I then at one point said, yeah, if I'm daily commuting, then I still, at least I have an electric car. Mm -hmm. And I hope that the power comes from, from mm -hmm. something yeah. sustainable. And uh, yeah, it, in this distance, it works very well. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I mean, I was just thinking, so now uh, you, you see this whole movement of, of people moving to the cities. And now you have the countryside is, is empty, at least in, in, in Romania, there are many empty villages. And you see people actually moving back. So uh, uh, I, I, how's, how's that in, 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 in I, Austria? I, I, because I think the quality of life in, in, in the countryside, I mean, there's a lot to say for it. I mean, and if you can work remote, I mean, why go to the city? I think, I think that's the point which is uh, very quickly and very broadly coming since the pandemic. I think in the days before it was, as you described it, for Romania, uh, maybe not to that extent as Austria is, is not such a big country than Romania, so it's, it's back. But you find many regions where, where usually young people leave the area and it's really, it's really bad. Because, you know, if, if the population is not there, then over time also the infrastructure gets down and then it's uh, self-enforcing. Yeah. 
and uh, and only since the pandemic we see that that uh, young families with kids move again back to the countryside as their parents then can can also work remotely but still i mean it's a long way till the country is back it's rather that uh, around the the city of vienna for example i mean this area is booming uh, immeasurably but uh, a little far away it it will take some time but but with with some investment in infrastructure what you need for to get the digital access and all that i, I think it can work yeah, I, I mean, I lived in the countryside for lo long enough when I was a kid, and I hope I don't have an, let's say, overly romantic idea about it, but I really would like to spend more time in the countryside. Th this time of the year, uh, especially, I like it, you know, you have, uh, you have, you have all the, 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 the fruits uh, uh, to be picked and then and to, to, to prepare for the, for the winter, and that, that's, uh, that's, 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 that's interesting also as, as a process. I mean, sitting around the fire must be, uh, I mean, thousands of years of, of, uh, of, of collective experience or, or whatever somehow built in. And the same as is at now looking, at, looking at the stars, which you don't see in the, in the city. I think it's difficult to put, to put your finger on, but, but I, I do hope that this, this reconnection with, with, with nature or the, the, this sort of experience help us also to, to become more, now, to use a modern word, sustainable in, in what we're doing. And, that I, I think we may not always realize how much we, we, are, we are missing. And, and I'm sure there are a lot of people that have never lived uh, or, or did not grow up, uh, grew up in the countryside that, that just don't know what, uh, what they're missing. I think this is a fantastic insight. I, I think there is, is one way to, to make us aware of what's going on. And uh, this might be helpful for many people, but uh, probably for, for many it's, uh, it's difficult to understand that there is a very positive trade-off if you give up on something and what you gain. But, but as you said, if, if you experience that, then, then probably it's much easier to give up on the one thing which is waste and, and whatever and come back to the sustainability. Uh, I think that's a, a great insight what you shared. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it just it, I think that's 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 maybe the way it it, it, it works for me. But uh, yeah, anyway, it, it's uh, maybe easier to, uh, to to see what's happening uh, to the uh, planet uh, or around us when when you when you are ex 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 more exposed to uh, to the direct uh, effects and, and, and impact. I don't know, uh, but, yeah. but Stephen, when we when we talk about this uh, this big transformation which is ahead of us, what what about your own experience? You are uh, a Dutch. You you moved from from an environment which is rather different the way at least I from the outside I would look at it to to Romania, which which is different and, and yeah, we have so many great people here, but, but still this is uh, coming from time to time and, uh, and meeting these people. And, and of course, uh, Romanian people are very skilled and very international. At least this is what, what I experience when, when living with those people and watching them when they're working, being in our company or in Austria in a country. But, but how, how was it for you or, or how would you describe it, this, this big transformation? I assume it was a big transformation for well, you. Well, it, it, it was, but, but, uh, uh, but I mean, it was not like one shock or whatever, you know, I just... <clears throat> so, I, I mean, 84, 85, I fell in love with this Romanian girl and you know, and then, so you get started interested in, in, in Romania. I visited Romania for the first time in 85, November 85, I, I'll never forget. And, uh, you know, and like so many things, I, I, I tried to read everything there was to read about. And then you, you visit the place and it's totally different, you know, the, uh, which is even today, I think in many cases, the, the case if with internet or, or television or whatever. I mean, you visit the place, it's different uh, all, all the time. Anyway, that's uh, so, but, but at that time, I mean, 
I, uh, under communist rule, I mean, of course, you, I didn't have any considered living here or whatever. I mean, everybody wanted to get out of Romania, and that is also also what what what, what we did. Uh, so we got married, and then we moved seven years. We lived in the Netherlands. It's only when I when I came back in '93 to, to when I to, to work in Romania, and then you see the difference between visiting a country and living in a country and working there, and that is. Uh, expats uh, will, will, will tell you that about different countries as well. So there are countries that are great for holidays, but terrible to work. I won't. Uh, but uh, so, so it, it was a change. But but uh, and but I, I really wanted to, to be to be successful. And uh, I, I think the, the biggest mistake you can make is, is that is that everything has to be like at home. Uh, so uh, so therefore, I, I think uh, when we talk about expats and companies, I, I think the, uh, the most you're only valuable after you have gone through through two countries because then you start figuring out that there are a lot of ways uh, to, to solve a problem or to look and, and it's not your way is the only way uh, but but uh, but but of course I mean you remain with a number of things that you I mean you're not going to change but you you get uh, over age uh, you're more aware of them uh, that this is stuff that you carry with you because that's why the way you were raised but but in Romania, uh, for instance, I mean, you have this fantastic nature, yes, and uh, these mountains and the forest and the sea and uh, it's. Uh, I mean, what do we have in the Netherlands? I mean, this is flat like a pancake. You have a few trees and and uh, and, uh, and uh, so this this stuff uh, is 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 not always, uh, I think, as as appreciated as as it as it should be. Uh, so the, the, uh, so so I love this country. I mean, it has so many things to offer, uh, but. Yeah, I mean, it does not mean that that uh, everything will happen by by itself, and that is, I think, some of the problems that that, that you see. And uh, um, it's like you know the the curse of, of somebody who's very talented. You know, it just doesn't mean when you have the talent that, that you're also going to automatically be be, be successful. Uh, but but you know, I think I, I adapted, uh, but but I have to accept. Like, and I think most experts will tell you, long-term experts will tell you. I mean. After a certain period of time, you never become really uh, a citizen of the country, uh, your adopted country, but you also never uh, become 100% back again to uh, the nationality that, 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 that you were born with. I mean, I'm out, I'm for more than 25 years out of the Netherlands. I lived in Russia, Hungary, Romania. I'm, I'm not 100% Dutch, but I will never be 100% Romanian either. And so I just take refuse under the European umbrella. I'm, I, I'm, I'm European and I'm. Uh, and, and that that is what uh, uh, that's how I see myself. That and I, I think more people should should look at it like this. In a way, uh, I think you uh, you just uh, you just have to find this this place this 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 balance between uh, having the identity of the city or the region, uh, the identity of the nation maybe, and the and but still all under a European umbrella. Uh, and and so. I, I'm in a way proud that uh, I was born in this part of the Netherlands, that I'm from the Netherlands, that I'm European, and I can be all of this at the same time. Huh? Uh, and and what, what sometimes bothers me is that people uh, on this very low level uh, say, well, uh, if, if, you, uh, if you're from here, then you're not from there, and, and, uh, and you get this, this very confrontational, uh, confrontational setting. I, I think, you know, you, you can, in the first place, you're, you're, you're all European, and you have plenty of, of common heritage and, and values to, to, to be proud of. Now this is also a very, very interesting thought, because no? uh, what, you, what you remember us is that uh, it took hundreds of years from uh, having this Italian or, or states in the Netherlands, so the city with, with the wall and being on its own, Till they they built something bigger. No? It took hundreds of years no? with uh, fights and whatever. So we can only hope that that it it's going to be a little bit faster in in Europe. But on the other hand, uh, it, I think it's it's also good to be aware that yeah, some emotions uh, what we have, as you said, uh, in us and the heritage what we have. Uh, it's not so easy to overcome, so it it takes also patience till we till we get there where we hope we we could be or will be. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I guess it takes time. This reminds me when 
on my, my first year as a student. You know, um, usually you start, um, you start from the left mm. and then Marxism and then, then the more successful you are, you move probably to the market capitalism or whatever. In, in my case it was different, probably because I, when you're raised in the countryside, it's um, to some extent also an error society. And, and for me, freedom, what a society could offer, was, was probably more important. My parents were not rich, so, um, but, but I could survive, so, and not badly, I have to say, without luxury. But, but having that, I, for me, freedom, freedom was, was, was the main target and uh, the main goal. And, uh, and this also when the Iron Curtain fell. For me, this was, well, given freedom. I, I did not understand what else it meant for the many people. This, this was, well, so, but, but coming back to what you said, inclusiveness. Yeah, in, in these early days, I'm, and there are many people who, who do not like this, this, um, this, this Austrian guy, Hayek, so who, who of course, but he said, do not, do not judge the value of the person, what the person have achieved. Because in our market environment, someone might be lucky and is very successful and others not, but this does not define the value of the person. And uh, I, I found this very, very, very important that we, that we understand that, that the value of the person is independent from, from what you achieve. And, and then I think it's what you said, and this is why I came to it, is, uh, that inclusiveness is then a must. It, it, there, there is no no other way if you if you accept that success is to a large extent randomly then then it's easier to include all all in a, a decent way i agree with uh, the, the importance of freedom uh, so uh, for me freedom is is, is extremely important as, uh, and yeah, of course we'll see now what happens now when you uh, now we, we move more into the direction of uh, of equality and uh, uh, not sure. Was it uh, Milton Fr uh, Friedman who said something? You, you, if you want, how was it? If you want to have both equality and liberty, you, you will end up without both, uh, with both of the, with, uh, with both, without uh, any of them. I, I don't know how it, how it was exactly, but that's then freedom of chance, freedom of of, of, of opportunity. Uh, but that, not even that is enough. Uh. I think that's important. No? That uh, that. That is freedom opportunity. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of consumption because yeah, uh, you it's being sold uh, to you that it makes you happy, uh, and and, uh, and and sometimes maybe even we uh, as, as 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 bankers. I mean, we you you part of it. I mean, you you sell people a loan uh, because when you take the loan, you can buy this, and when you buy this, then it makes you happy, and then you pay three years in installments uh, uh, for, to, to, to enjoy your happiness. It's, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is another interesting point, because, you know, I, uh, throughout some period of time in my career, I was always also wondering. But then, then I took the analogy to, the, uh, to, to what we do in business. No? You, you take a loan to invest in your business and you produce and hopefully you gain something. No? But also for the private individual, no? it in, sometimes you might say it's a pity if you have to wait 10, 15 years to, till you can afford from your savings your own apartment or whatever. So why not uh, accept the loan and, and work work for it, but instead of saving the amount, you, you're repaying your loan. The difference is um, you already enjoy the nicer environment, which might be good for you and your family. So um, it, it depends on, on what, how you spend the money. Um, I, there, there is one idea about choice and consumption, which I had not thought through, and maybe you have an, an idea about that. So, 
So just recently I read, uh, as we have talking before about happiness, uh, over time it might get, it might become more and more difficult that people get satisfaction because um, the opportunities, so the goods, the services what you can buy, they they are growing much faster than your income. So it's uh, if you look what you can can afford and, and what what's potentially available, then then the gap gets bigger and bigger. And and it seems that we need a totally different attitude to, to deal with with such a a growing growing offer and uh, accepting what we can afford and what not. This might be a challenge. Maybe this is changing anyhow with our sustainability thinking, but, but I think in these days it's, it's an issue. Because in my, in my youth uh, there was little, and I, not being aware <laughs> what I cannot afford, I, I never missed anything. Oh, yeah. Uh, this reminds me of two, two things. First place, I was really happy that they got a credit so that they could buy my house because yeah. otherwise we would not be able to, to, to afford it. So I mean, credit obviously has, uh, is, has, has, has a very, very import, uh, important role. No, you know, this, what you tell me reminds me of when I was a little boy, a little boy, when I was maybe 15, 16 or whatever. We had these discussions about which car was better. You know, you had these, these little booklets with all the cars and yeah, says, well, yeah. and with picture, how your yeah. horsepower it had. And, that. Yeah. and you had these, these incredible d debates about which car was better. None of us had ever driven a car. None of us had any idea uh, about uh, how we could, could not uh, afford them. We could hardly afford the book about the cars. And, but uh, there was a, there was a heated uh, a heated debate. But now, when you can actually afford that stuff, it is uh, you know it is no longer it's no longer that, that that interesting. Anyway, I'm I'm not not very much uh, into uh, in, into cars. You're not so much into cars. But with you, I could rather talk about bikes. Huh? You know everything about bikes. Yes, yes, yeah. But also also, but you know. But what I think is important is, is the law of diminishing returns. Yes, I mean, uh, I will never forget my first bike or the first day that I, uh, I rode my own little bike and it was a blue bike and I rode it for the first time alone and I know exactly where it was, from where to where. Uh, and it, it was great and I was the happiest kid in the, kid in the world. So now I can afford any bike I want. I have seven of them. But if I really consider buying an eighth bike, would that add a lot to, to my life? I, I don't think so. Yeah? Impossible. Uh, so, no, but but I see a lot of people uh, around me that don't stop buying yeah. their bikes. I mean, uh, just uh, to look at use it as as as, an, uh, as, as, as a comparison. It's a nice nice sound as well. Yeah, yeah. This uh, this is very this is a, a nice fantastic. thing. We should we should have bring some brought up some some marshmallows or some meat or whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, it's no. a fantastic yeah. design. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, I think the. Okay, now fine. If you have enough money, you can fly uh, yourself. You take a rocket and you fly out, uh, outside to, to out of to, to space and come back. Yeah, that's too early for me. No? I mean, I would need to meet some people to tell me how wonderful, how wonderful this is. Still, then probably I will never do it. Yeah, no, but I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, 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 I'm in interested in. It. I, I think you know. The, 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 the secret is, is I think, to, to stop uh, at a certain moment and, and ask yourself, well, uh, how, how much is enough? Yeah? And, and about consumption, look at food. Yes, I mean, so do you really need uh, to have uh, uh, strawberries for Christmas, uh, or, or, or do you need really need uh, Japanese beef? So if you want, uh, I, I prefer not to eat meat actually. But so. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's yeah. it's easy to 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 make uh, or to avoid uh, those 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 debates because you simply don't have the data, mm -hmm. yeah. and mm -hmm. so you say, well, why not? Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's in front of me in the supermarket, and uh, so we simply we, we don't we not we don't really know what 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 uh, the impact is, what the cost is, what the real what the, what the real cost is, and yeah, so so I, I'm. Not sure if you would know all the stuff, it would even make you happy. Uh, so now the whatever average worker 
has to work, uh, I don't know, three, to three hours, uh, so how was it, how many hours somebody has to work to can be able to pay for a chicken or something. And, uh, and so now, okay, it's less, you pay much less, you can pay a chicken, but how was the poor chicken uh, grown? Yes, I mean, uh, uh, it's uh, not sure if I need a chicken for, uh, if, uh, the, if, uh, if I know how it was actually uh, grown. I think I think it's everything is right what you say. I I wonder how how difficult this transformation will be because you know with uh, globalization is about uh, specializing in what we do now and we have this uh, this economic idea. I'm not sure if I'm right with Ricardo or so, who, who made this comparative advantage of, of different production environments. And uh, of course, with, uh, you might say, with this means of transport and whatever, and maybe also not, not uh, having, charging the real cost what we have. We have developed an economic structure which is globalized and, and as you described it, and the challenge will be to bring it back uh, so that in this process no one suffers too much, but we get the environment and everything right. So I think this is a real challenge and uh, I'm, I'm optimistic that, that it's, it's doable, but, but it's, it's a complex and no. undertaking. Well, you know, I, I think there's a lot of uh, what, I, uh, what you call remoteness huh? or, or distance created by all those, those mm -hmm. oil systems. Uh, you I mean, were not in the smoke. I'm, I'm in the smoke, so uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> it's, anyway, it's, I won't take it personally. We're, we're, we're coming back to the old uh, yeah. Indians yeah. where yeah. That, uh, <laughs> the smoke si signals. Yeah, you yeah. get the smoke as well. No, but, but all this optimization. So, so, so let's say uh, two generations back, I mean, a lot of companies were owned by shareholders, uh, families. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and those families uh, usually knew what the impact was of their business in their societies. Uh, now uh, we have companies that are owned by, by shareholders that are pension funds or uh, people buy and sell shares based on, on, uh, on the recommendation of analysts, et, et cetera, et cetera. But there is zero, uh, let's say, link uh, between the shareholding and the way the money is produced. It's just too remote. Uh, and uh, you see the same in, in, in the way our food is produced. Uh, of course, you, uh, you see in the morning, if you live in the countryside, in the morning you see this chicken walking around and in the evening you see it and you find it in your pot for dinner. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty clear. And now you go to the supermarket and you, you find this frozen, deep frozen chicken and you don't know where it comes from, but you buy it because it's cheaper than the next one without having any idea about how this is, is, is being produced. This remoteness uh, you, you see everywhere. And the fact also about, let's say, the environment, it's about remoteness because it is, uh, it's the impact somewhere in the future and it's too far away for you to, 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 to relate to. And that is uh, what I like about uh, the uh, the, the, the countryside is because you basically brought closer uh, to the impact uh, of, uh, uh, of of your own footprint. And so if if you burn wood for fuel, uh, then you know. And if you cut the wood by your, uh, and uh, I, I I can tell you I cut a lot of wood because my my parents uh, we had, had some 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 wood some forest and so we would burn a lot of wood. So I was the only only son. So. That was my job to cut wood, and it did a lot of it. But so I mean, that gives you a different appreciation about what it means uh, to to burn wood, and then when you just switch on the heating and you see the energy bill at the end of the month, and uh, you say, well, this is kind of high. Uh, so so, and and therefore, so this this remoteness, uh, this this disconnect between ownership uh, and impact, uh, or consumption uh, and production. Uh, uh, I think it's one of the problems that, that, we, that we're facing today. And I, my, I wonder if, if through uh, new technology, uh, like, like, like blockchain and, and others, you will be able to create more transparency uh, about what the impact is of what your choices are as, as, as a consumer. 
uh, and that you not you oh, I buy this because it's cheaper or because that because it's a better brand, but so I buy this because this is produced in a different way uh, than that product. Yeah, I I agree with what you say. Still, I I wonder you know, it. Behavior is created over over many years, and uh, and I think at looking at myself, how difficult for me it is to to change my behavior, even even when I'm fully aware and clear that that it's not good what I'm doing, be it what I eat or whatever you you name it, still. To totally change my behavior, it's uh, it's, and I know you you always say it's just a mindset, but but uh, <laughs> but come to that point, and, uh, and uh, yeah, we are bankers, so we 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 have a, a good living, and for for people with uh, less income, probably this is even more difficult. So it's. Uh, Probably it's uh, a long way. I hope it doesn't take uh, three generations. Uh, what finally it was till we came here, or maybe it's even longer. But yeah, it, w it it's to be seen. To, you're right that we should aim for for something else. But the challenge is how how to convince us that that we all go in this direction. Well, I, I, I don't think we should expect everybody to be a saint, but, but I, I just think we can do a better job at, at providing choices so that people can, that want to make a choice can maybe take a better choice or a better informed choice. So the full information, this is where, where you build it, on which you build it, yeah? Makes well, sense. Well, I, I, I would sense. hope that, that information Makes technology sense. that we talk a lot about these days uh, is not only to help to increase productivity, but also uh, show us the, 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 the true costs of, of some of the decisions that, that we take in, uh, in, in, in our day-to-day -day lives. And, uh, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know if, uh, if I would take the flight to, the, to, to Vienna, I don't know what, how, what, what this means in kilograms of, uh, of, 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 of tons of CO2. I can e easily look it up, uh, but uh, it's not that transparent. By the way, I understand there are, there are voices that say that each citizen should get its own quota of CO2, and then you can use it uh, on whatever you want. So you can fly to one destination, and then basically that's it for, for the whole rest of the year, or you can eat meat, or you can do all, all, all sorts of, of, of other stuff. It's uh, maybe a bit far going, but, but uh, we, uh, who knows what, what, what we end up with. Could be. Uh I don't know. I, I haven't thought through, but, but limiting it uh, per head would be probably one way. And then the question is, uh, as we're bankers, we immediately I would approach you, Stephen, would you, would you sell some of what you don't anyhow not need because you, you're a countryman in the future, uh, can I have some of your quota? Yeah, yeah. Who, who knows? Who knows? Well, I mean, that, that's what you see now happening with with the big CO two quota. Yes. That's, that's, uh, so, yeah. No, but then I would first uh, I would first uh, uh, plant my forest, and then then I will sell you some of my 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 uh, uh, my, my quota. Yeah. So. Yeah. Maybe this is the option. To do well, more on that stuff as yeah. well. Who knows? So, uh, anyway, so good stuff to talk about, about uh, around the fire. Thank you for this opportunity and... Uh, well, thank you. I, I enjoyed it. I hope... Uh, I didn't have it for a long period of time, such a, a real fireplace chat now. Yeah. We have it quite often, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, in but a very digital environment. Yeah, uh, usually fireplace chat without a fire. I mean, it works better with the fire, I, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the other thing we should introduce is having the next, uh, we have our board meetings uh, by taking a, a long walk uh, through the forest and then see how that works out instead of sitting in a meeting room. Uh, yeah. Maybe we get uh, to yeah, different yeah. discussions and different decisions. In, in, in these days, uh, you would be surprised, but Sergei Kostuchenko offered this several times. Really? Mm -hmm. Let's have the meeting. Mm -hmm.
but out in the woods. Yeah, maybe yeah. Maybe we still do it. No, not no, in indeed. the near future, probably in these no. days. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's the next episode. Great idea. Is, uh, walk, uh, walk through. Uh, walk through the wood. Walk through it through, through the woods. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me.